I'm, I'm Dale Kuntz. Uh, this is Inside the Eye of a Hot Activation. Um, and if you don't get the reference, Inside the Eye of, uh, of a Very Ugly Woman Named Yolanda or Hyann. Um, uh, I'm Dale, uh, again, Kelly Mapner. I work for the Red Cross. Um, pretty much landed my dream job uh, after being, uh, as Kate and I would talk about it, an evil consultant for a while. Finally get to map for good. Premise here, everything that I'm talking about is Red Cross and hot. Um, and I just want to make sure anything that I talk about here, I may talk a lot about Red Cross. Everything that we do is through hot in an OSM context, um, in disasters, and a lot of times during DRR work. So hot's amazing. So November 7th, this is 24 hours, 36 hours before the typhoon, Andrew Buck, a very nice gentleman in North Dakota, sent out an email, hey guys, preparations for Typhoon Haiyan. Let's do some mapping of the city that is probably going to get the worst hit, Taklavan. It's a city of 230,000 people. Let's, let's do something about it. So then this happened. Um, very ugly storm. Um, huge. So winds, uh, sustained wind speeds at 195 miles an hour, gust of 235 miles an hour, Storm surge anywhere between 12 and 16, uh, 12 meters. There's 16 million people affected. A little over 6,000 people lost their lives. There's still 1,000 people that are missing. This is what it's like to be in a 200 mile an hour wind. Very scary. This is downtown Taklavan. I can say that I've been on this street since you know the typhoon. And it's amazing how quickly it's come back. Um, this is some imagery, and we'll get into the imagery in a, in a little bit. But this just sort of shows how bad the damage is. Entire neighborhoods, entire blocks, entire streets are just wiped off the, off the map. Um, I love this one. This one shows before and after, and it's a little quick. But in the sort of on the eastern side there, you can see a lot of houses and whatnot. And then in the after picture, you see some giant boats that are on the land. Um, Really scary stuff. This is a little island in between some of the bigger islands. And obviously just completely destroyed. So this shows uh, nighttime imagery from Halloween. And then a week later on the 9th, so the next day after the typhoon. So you see lots of lights and then no lights. And then the next night, maybe a little bit more. But really lots of lights and then no lights. So our staff started to get organized and what we like to do at the Red Cross is we like to send out big honking maps with our staff. So they show up with a map tube of say 50 to 60 maps of wherever they're gonna be so that we can pin stuff on them, draw on them, do all kinds of stuff. This is a base map of Toulouse, Leyte, that we made on Friday night, I believe, Thursday night. It's basically a blank sheet of paper. Um, there's really no data, right? You guys have all seen the before pictures. This is really, really bad. So then, so for the next sort of <laughs> the first 72 hours of a, uh, of a big event like this, it's a little crazy, I'll be honest. Uh, knowing who to talk to, you know, it also happened to be the weekend, so I felt really bad. Trying, I thought very hard about calling Josh directly on his cell phone uh, for help, um, but it was... It was a little crazy. But in 24 hours, those people that started to map before the typhoon mapped 10,000 buildings in Taklaban. So before the international sort of media thing had gotten started, HOT had already contributed to map 10,000 buildings. And this is really thankless work. This is my son and my new dog. Um, this is, and it's really repetitive work, right? It's just <laughs> over and over. And this is a GIF, but I'll say that like, I don't, my wife suggested I not make this a GIF and show the actual video of this like for two minutes straight um, until he falls down and dies laughing. But it's highly repetitive work. It's work that needs to get done. And, uh, but it, it can also be a lot of fun. So coordination. Coordination basically looks like this these days. Um, it's a lot of Skype. My, I think everyone's Skype groups during the, during the typhoon activation that first week was unreal. I have so many new virtual friends 
It is amazing. Uh, people that I've never met in real life, that I may be meeting in the last couple of days in real life, really did a lot. Not, hey, I don't know you. Oh, let's add Dale to this group that has you and Ocha on it. And oh, let's get the, the hot group over here to be over, you know, these guys need some help. But the, the funny thing is, I remember, I don't know, say on Sunday maybe, I asked Andrew, I said, so have you guys officially activated yet? Because there's this whole idea that hot activates, right? All of a sudden, like, the big boys come, right? <laughs> so, but I was like, are you guys doing anything yet? And I said, well, have you? And he's like, well, I guess, I don't know. And I was like, officially, we're requesting your help. We need, we need to make this happen. So at this point, we'd only had like, say, 40 or 50 mappers go. And then maybe the activation goes out, and then maybe like another 10 will come, maybe another 20, right? Um, and at this point also, we, had, we also had, so we had staff that we were sending out on, this shows the German Red Cross, but we had staff that was leaving our office Saturday morning that came in to sort of do some work, and then they, were, they came in at 9, we all came in at 9, like, oh, we'll just make maps and go home for a couple hours. Um, we were there until about 1 in the morning. Uh, but we... We got in in the morning and our staff is, they're gonna, they're gonna go maybe. Maybe they'll go. Uh, maybe they'll go the next day, maybe they'll go two days later to provide some help. Our staff came in at nine and was on a plane at two. So really rapid turnaround. A lot often, we don't know where our staff are going. We have no idea. We don't know what the damage is. We don't know uh, sort of where they should be going. But HOT's really great to work with because they're, they don't wanna waste my time. They don't wanna waste volunteer time. They wanna know exactly where our staff are gonna go so that they can prioritize those areas. So when they get those people get on the ground, those areas that need to be mapped to provide assistance for those folks is there. And that's sort of, it's, it's amazing that that is the driving sort of how we map where disaster, where humanitarians are going. This is one map just to show you sort of the global response of the Red Cross. I'm not gonna explain the Red Cross sort of organization to you because I still don't understand it, it's very confusing. But basically just to say that there are 189 Red Crosses in the world. Um, and then there's also the IFRC and the ICRC, so 191 loose friends. And in this, during the typhoon, I think 20 something countries, 20 something national societies contributed support to the Philippine uh, Red Cross, which was running the whole response. So everything we did, we were working through the Philippine Red Cross. But we really, we were still using media reports. Or, uh, our people are getting on planes, but we don't know where to go. You know, there's, there's people in the airport in Tacloban that need to get out. There's some boats here, or there's something over there. We really have no idea what's going on. And, but it was the, Philip. you know, there's lots of different ways to sort of get that help out or sort of, you know, a lot of people are saying that Twitter's the, you know, mapping tweets and stuff to know where the damage is is really good. Um, I can say by and large we didn't actually use that data. We knew sort of it was out there, um, but we sort of didn't see the, there's not that, it's, it's hard to say sort of how we can use that sort of um, the Twitter data, the social media stuff, because it's, it's almost too fine grained detail. We sort of need to aggregate up. Because when we talk, we, yes, we want to uh, affect change in, in people's lives, but we do it at a sort of a scale that is, starts at this giant level and then it's sort of helped out at the very low levels. So the game changer. So a few days in, I got an email from a gentleman at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, also uh, basically the CIA's mapping arm, right? No, well, they're, they're super awesome. <laughs> super secret government, right, whatever. So they're awesome. I got this email, I said, hey, I got some, uh, I got some imagery derived stuff, some damage assessments that you guys can have. So this is digital globe imagery that wasn't yet sort of in the, that anybody could see, that they were seeing before anybody else did. They were doing damage assessments. Well, I couldn't see it. Damage assessments. Yeah. Okay, so whatever it was. <laughs> Again, so this goes into, we'll get into the imagery thing in a bit. But, so the, uh, it's this, this data here, so these shape files that we were getting from an email from somebody at the NGA was giving it to us. We were turning these around and creating tasks, working with HOT to create tasks to know where to go map. So you can see sort of the really bad, sort of the, the red areas are the bad damage, orange less so, and then that's sort of the gross damage assessments we were using to go and prioritize where we were gonna go map. 
So imagery. Right? During a hot activation, imagery is the big problem. I would say for like there's two kinds of imagery events or sort of disaster events. There's sort of storm related events. Um, and then there's sort of others like earthquakes, right? Storm related events like Haiyan, it's really hard to get satellite coverage when it's a giant cloud um, in the way. So um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Um, there's lots of people to talk to, there's lots of partners to talk to. In the last couple of days, we've had a lot of conversations about sort of how to make those processes better. Um, the HIU has been amazing in sort of imagery to the crowd, um, and now with MapGive, which you guys are going to hear a lot about next. But we have, there's lots of people to talk to. And again, the storm was really, really big. Um, so it was tough in that sort of that 24, 72 hour range where everyone, we want imagery, we want imagery. Um, it's sort of, we didn't, it wasn't available to us um, quick enough. So we just started using old imagery, right? This is what we do. We're like, oh, let's, let's look at the Bing imagery. Let's see what Bing has. So we started mapping what was there, which is really valuable, actually, as it turns out. So we map all the stuff that was there, and then we're able to just sort of do uh, changes, sort of damage assessments, that kind of thing. But then we got imagery. Um, so a lot of people did a lot of good work. Um, Josh, again, DG. NGA, lots of people sort of stepped up and started releasing imagery just straight out. Um, it was really awesome. It sort of it was almost overwhelming, actually, because we all of a sudden had access to tons and tons of pre-imagery, so pre-disaster imagery. We, um, at this point, we're still sort of pre-mapping, you know, several days, a week after the storm, mapping what was there, um, starting to do some damage assessment stuff, some after action stuff with some of the imagery Josh provided through the imagery to the crowd. And you can see, this is sort of a bad example here because this is not Josh's imagery, um, but it shows sort of what we were looking at. Yeah, this is Copernicus. So we were um, looking at individual building damage assessments. So we were able to get sort of how badly um, neighborhoods or whole towns were affected. But again, this is sort of, so this is data that we've gotten. And then there was the other kind of data. There was the data that was, <laughs> was sort of out there. You know, it's on a website, it's on, you can, if you're smart enough, you know, you view the source, you can see where it's coming from. Um, we had some really, really smart people um, sort of slightly reverse engineer some stuff to get us some data about storm search height. Um, around sort of a couple other data sets because it's really important to us, but it was sort of locked away in somebody else's web viewer. Um, so then what, did you, what does HOT do, right? So HOT did a lot. So this is from December 3rd. So I would say like the HOT activation really sort of started to wrap up about the end of January, middle of January. Um, all, in all told, like this map says 1,500 contributors. It's like 1,600 contributors, 4.8 million edits to the map. Um, and if you want to see change sets, that's change sets. Um, basically, it was a lot. Uh, order of magnitude, so Haiti was around 600 mappers, uh, about 1.2, 1.3 million edits, I believe. Again, so you're talking about an order of magnitude sort of three times that. It's amazing. So the classic before and afters, I'm only going to show one. Um, but this is Taklapan before, Taklapan after. It makes a huge difference when you show up and you know what you're doing, when you know where the buildings are. So when our cash transfer teams are there and they know where all the banks are, or they're able to go and tag a bank, uh, tag a polygon um, with their GPS and give us, send us that GPS file, and we're able to put bank in there, or take the hospital data, put the hospital. It makes a huge difference, not only for them, but for um, the UN OCHA team and the Mercy Corps team and the World Vision team. and it, There's so many actors at play in these big disasters that OpenStreetMap is the language that we use to talk to one another. I don't have the time to call Mercy Corps. I don't have the time to call UN. What we use to transfer, transfer data between one another is OpenStreetMap. It is the default sort of humanitarian mapping language now. 
So the other thing that happens during activations is a lot of mapping parties. We had a very smart um, intern come to us and say, hey, a lot of the stuff you guys are doing in Jossum or, or in OSM is really cool. I figured out how to use Jossum last night, and this is sort of what I did, and I'm sharing it with two of my other uh, fellow interns because we're going to be mapping at night. And I said, awesome. How about you re lead a, a, a lunch session about it and do some more mapping with a, a wider group of people? So we put out a brown bag, and this happens in, and I've heard about this happening from a lot of different other organizations. One employee learns about OSM, learns about JOSM or ID, and starts to sort of educate their other coworkers, and they very quickly make this, which we, this little quick cheat sheet, we had no input into this, sort of the GIS team had no time to sort of put into having, creating 10 more mappers at the time. But she took it on upon, upon herself. They had 30 people in a room for lunch, and they did a lot of mapping for the, the rest of the response. So how are they used, right? So we hear a lot about how hot, you know, what's the value of OpenStreetMap and hot during humanitarian response? Well, you don't have a use case. Who uses it? Nobody uses it. Um, yes. Yes, we use it. Um, you're seeing here Christina Hammond. She's a cash IM delegate. So she's, planning, she's actually planning out where our cash distributions are going to be. But we have to give that data to our teams in a lot of different ways. Where we go a lot of times, there's no internet. In Tacloban, we were really privileged in that we brought our own internet. We brought satellite internet with us. Um, that is really rare because it costs $20,000 a month. Um, it's very expensive. Um, and the companies sort of donated that satellite time to us for this. But we have to have paper. You know, it's, it's, you still have to have paper for a response. We also made websites. So here you're seeing our web viz. Um, I've never pushed live code before straight to how end users were using it in real time. So a lot of times we would uh, break the site, um, trying to you know, introduce new features or new layers. The Mapbox guys sort of helped us um, one Saturday at Crisis Commons, Crisis Mappers or whatever it was, sort of re-engineer this thing so that it was much easier for even our, we had our interns updating the layers on the map. And this is totally goes against everything that Mapbox loves. Like they, they love like one layer on the map. This is like a, a, a real geo portal using Mapbox layers. Um, it's very ugly, I admit, but it's really quick. Um, then we had our map folio. So we made five or 600 maps. Um, I talked to Map Action. They made their, they mapped for the UN OCHA. They made something on the order of 2,000 maps. So when you start getting that many maps, you have to make them searchable. So we made them searchable via a website. It's hosted on GitHub pages, freely available. Go and download our maps. So the cool maps. So this shows, and this is the next one's a better example. So this is like the, I was talking to Kevin earlier, this is like the, the tertiary product of OSM, right? So mappers get the imagery, then they do base mapping, and then our GIS team takes some administrative boundaries, puts that on top of it, takes some population data, puts that in there, run a quick numbers, get some other numbers, and all of a sudden we have our sort of our target beneficiaries for each barangay. So this is at the admin four level in the Philippines, which is amazing because this is, you know, these barangays are amazingly organized. Um, it's great to deal with. There's like a barangay captain. That's the person in charge of the barangay. When I was in the Philippines, you could go to the barangay captain and he could have everybody in the barangay sort of in front of you in about 20 minutes. Um, for relief distribution, that is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so we use these maps, you see these tiny little numbers underneath the names, and here you see the teams are circling where they're gonna go. So we're gonna hit these two together, we're gonna do these two together, and we're gonna prioritize them. Here's another example. So again, OSM, they're looking at building density, they're looking at roads, how can they get there? So this is our, 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 our communications team love this. Right, this is the money shot, if you will. So lots of Red Cross branding, lots of OSM. Uh, so OSM on paper, and then you see a tablet with OSM and. All of our teams had OSM and um, supported tablets, and we were pushing them updated OSM base maps. They use this to get around. A lot of times, the local drivers were actually from the next island over and didn't know their way around. <coughs> Is another shot, so showing what, what it looks like. 
I'm going to talk really briefly about the, the damage assessment sort of that we did. So we were contacted by USAID, and they said, hey, this hot stuff is really cool, this OSM stuff is really cool, but how good is it? So without sort of telling the hot community and without telling the OSM community that we were sort of going to do this, we put one of our staff on a plane three weeks after the typhoon to look at how good the data actually was. And turns out it wasn't actually that good <clears throat> as far as the damage assessment quality. Um, and I think for looking forward, it wasn't that good for sort of good reasons. The, the imagery was sort of wasn't that great or wasn't clear. We provided bad guidance about how to actually tag stuff, about what, it, what it, a Filipino building that's been destroyed actually looks like. The mechanisms for showing before and after imagery weren't very good. So there was no slider functionality, you know? So we have sort of some basic recommendations and all this whole report was published a few months ago on GitHub. So you can go there for a look at it. But mostly thank you. It's absolutely amazing that so many people helped. I love that people can help in their underwear on the couch. <laughs> but there's more work to do. And we want to work harder. And we want <laughs> But we want to work really smartly, right? <laughs> So build software, um, document stuff. We need help documenting workflows, documenting processes, um, and trace. Um, lots of tracing. Uh, speaking of tracing, you can help us right now in Harare, Zimbabwe. Um, it's up right now. So you can stop on the tasking manager right now. Go trace. We're doing some DRR urban work there. It's really awesome. Thank you.